I didn't believe until I heard it. To tell you the truth, I, 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 I it exceeded my expectations. It, it's this this thing is real. Words just cannot explain how fleshed out the sound is. I look at my phone and Philip has sent me multiple texts, single syllable words like "Oh my God," "Unbelievable," "Emotional," etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's like on and on and on and on. So good morning, everyone. Adrian from Audio Excellence Canada, Philip uh, and Louis. And we have Alex today who's basically decided to be lazy and sit on the side. And Christian's <laughs> monitoring the soundboard and the cameras. Are we paying him today? So, you, so, so as soon as Alex came in and I saw him, I said, Alex, who cut your hair? Did you have to pay him? He says, <laughs> my, my mom cut my hair. I said, oops. <laughs> so, so if you see Alex's haircut, it's like there's a big shock of hair still on top and in front. So, and th- so, the then, I, I made, like so I, I, then I made the other cliche joke, was, which was, what she do? Put, a, put a, a bowl over your head and cut around? She said. And then he says, that's what she used to do. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, uh, so today we're going to do our first impressions of the AudioNote and Gaku and the um, uh, speakers, the uh, AudioNote E. Oh, my God. A-N I, yeah. <laughs> slash E. So these are yeah, the E A-N-E speakers. A-N-E slash S-P-X S-E signature. Wow. H-E signature. Yeah, H-E signature. S-E wow. or H-E? S-E-N. H-E. 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 Wow. So I got some flack from some a couple of people who, who watch our unboxing. The comments was, you know, you guys should know what the hell you're, you're selling since you're a dealer. For all intents and purposes, that's what they said. My defense was I didn't order the speakers. When when the speakers arrived, um, um, I took a look on the website and it wasn't clear uh, what all this nomenclature means. And, uh, um, and if you clicked on all the individual... Um, uh, models on the website it doesn't take you anywhere it's just basically all you have these to understand models. there's like about 50 different versions of this speaker <laughs> and the price sheet doesn't say anything either so uh, that's in my defense on the other hand you're right uh, we're going to be a dealer so we should know these things and um, as a matter of fact uh, all jokes aside we did do uh, about an hour hour and a half interview with Peter Quattro and uh, two of his um, uh, colleagues at uh, Audio Note UK and that will drop probably in a week or so so watch out for that interview it's quite interesting anyway so today we're going to do our first impressions the reason why it's the first impressions is that we haven't had that many hours on it yet but I've been um, listening um, uh, sporadically whenever the system was on just to see what it was sounding like and just to see whether or not my initial impressions from the first day had changed and I thought well listen despite the fact that we don't yet have the 250 hours or whatever the uh, 225 225 whatever the factory or 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 some of the um, uh, uh, comments have been saying we should have uh, my honoriness and my contrariness decided screw you we're gonna do our first impressions just to see how and then of course later on we'll we'll do our revised impressions uh, once the uh, speakers and electronics have fully broken in um, let me start by giving you some details about the product. So the AudioNote Angaku is their top-of-the-line integrated amp. It's what they call the Tier 5. And in Tier 5, it's single-ended pure Class A, 211 tubes, zero negative feedback, tube rectification, AudioNote silver wire for all output transformers. So all the internal windings all uses um, AudioNote silver wire, and specifically AudioNote silver wire because AudioNote actually buys silver and then sends the silver to manufacturers to have the wire drawn. Um, All the internal wiring is silver, all the power supply connections are silver, transformers are custom designed by AudioNote and made in-house, and all capacitors are Blackgate or AudioNote silver foil. Um, 20 watts per channel, 48 kilograms or 105 pounds, 305 millimeters high, 355 millimeters wide, and 604 millimeters deep, or 12 inches high, 12 inches wide, and 25 inches deep. The speakers are the, as, as Philip said, Audio Note ANE SPX HE SE Signature, $72,000, one inch silk dome tweeter, eight inch hemp mid range woofer uses the SPX internal cable, external crossover, audio note, foil capacitors, silver inductors. Did you say uh, all nickel drivers? Uh, no, I don't think this one uses all nickel because uh, on the website, yeah, the website, the next model down says all nickel. So I think this one may not have all nickel. Anyway, who wants to start? Oh, by the way, the, the, the uh, on, on Gakus are 220000 uh, uh, Canadian dollars. And you can see our unboxing 
um, video, um, Christian will leave a link in the description box. So these are all Canadian prices. So, yeah. you, you know, yeah. you Yanks out there, you but you can't buy from us, but, you know, you can know what it is in Canadian dollars. Well, I guess technically, if we delivered it to you, you came to our our city, visited us, come up we here, would deliver it. it. Yes, then 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 we can uh, sell Think it. Think about you. all the Chinese food you could get or in around the store. Like Not this. just Chinese. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Who wants to start, Philip? Well, what did I tell you the first thing when I when I unboxed it? Oh, I wish I had my phone. Um, it was about five five thirty. I told the guys, "Look, we 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 have the stuff. It's it's after the Toronto Hi Fi show. Um, we finally um, um, sort of settled down after the Toronto show. Things have been brought back to the store, unboxed, and so on. But the Ongaku was still sitting in the box, and the speakers were still in the box. So I said to the guys, "Listen, please unbox it. Let's start breaking it in because at the Toronto show, they were just shown but not played, and I wanted to hear how good they were. So." I said to Philip and, and uh, uh, Lewis and the boys, please unbox it and then break it in and, and, and uh, let's go from there. So about 5, 5.30, I'm at a client's house. My hands are full. I'm lifting a projector uh, um, so that my installer can um, install it to the ceiling. And I hear my phone buzz, ding, 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 ding. Finally, I put the projector, uh, the projector's already hung. I look at my phone and Philip has sent me multiple texts, single syllable words like, oh my God, unbelievable, emotional, et cetera, et cetera. It's like on and on and on and on. So anyway, Billy, go uh, ahead. I said, uh, such good bass, no congestion, super coherent, tingles your inside. The mids just go through you. Yeah, Those were my initial impressions. And they've only grown since then. I thought you were going to say, and now they suck. <laughs> and now they're great. <laughs> they're even more great. It's the easiest amplifier, well, and slash speaker combination I've ever heard. It's, 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 oh my gosh, it just washes over you. Um, and every time I listen to music through this system, with, with, with the entire system that is, you know, amp and speakers, it, it makes my... I just react to it in a way that is like unprecedented. He's 18 years old again. I am 18 years old again when I listen to this app. It's like the everything wind I ever imagined. Gets excited. I'm not saying it's the ultimate in anything in terms of like, you know, audiophile, um, you know, uh, uh, characteristics. So it doesn't have the biggest sound stage. It's not the, the most, ex you know, the finest imaging. It's not the most resolution. It's not the this or that. But the way these two things work together, and it is it is the way the two of them work together, it presents a landscape that is fully colored, <clears throat> fleshed out, and real, in a sense that it's palpable, it, it, it feels natural, and for want of a better word, organic, definitely <laughs> organic. Like wow. if anything defines what organic is, this thing No, you have to buy it. another t-shirt because that's a penalty. Can't, can't use, use the word organic word. anymore. Well, I just used it and I'll use it again. Uh, I, I I love this combo. I mean, I I, I hooked up the on Gaku both to a pair of Sabrinas, and it did a fairly decent job with the Sabrina, uh, and also to a pair of um, excuse me Sonus Faber Amaj Tradition Amati speakers. With the Amati, the, the the amplifier was extremely detailed because the Amati is that type of speaker. Um, I, my 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 you know i would guess i would i would have to guess since i didn't get to talk to peter that the way they want it done they want it as as as, as liquid as possible you know so that it just plays music it doesn't shout out anything else it's just playing music everything sounds wonderful through it even stuff that is not recorded so well it, it it makes everything really, really, really beautiful. When I played Banana Rama through it, it was like, "Aha! Now I get it." <laughs> so there's that. Um, that's my initial impression, Lewis. Well, I I, I loved the, how it sounded. Um, bass, lots of bass. Uh, mid range is just beautiful and smooth. Um, the top end, um, the treble is um, just the same. Um, no complaints from me. The only complaint I have is the price. <laughs> but <laughs> no complaints, but there's a complaint. <laughs> there's a complaint. Um, honestly, um, it sounds really, really good. Would I want something like this if I had the money? Possible. 
Would my wife accept this? No. No, why is that? You're talking about the aesthetics of the aesthetics is just of the speakers. Uh, you mean of the especially the speaker. Mm -hmm. um, the finish is beautiful, but it's just a box. Yeah. Just a box. Isn't there anything on that isn't about boxes? And welcome back to Championship Boxing. <laughs> I guess this is okay. I mean, it's not really about boxes. And um. I prefer darker colors in the in the spe in the speaker box, but oh, you can I'm, choose the colors. Yeah, yeah you can yeah. choose the colors, but basically, there is nothing to complain about. Honestly, with this combination, um, it sounds wonderful. Value for money, I don't know. That's up to the buyer, or you know, somebody with very deep pockets would have to be thinking of, of this product. Uh, this combination rather other than how it looks the sound is just fantastic there is you know it everything is just fleshed out um organically uh -huh. i'll buy i'll uh -huh. buy a t-shirt again <laughs> i haven't worn the of one i bought purchased first it, it's this this thing is real it's easy for somebody to just look at the picture and for us to talk about it but hearing is believing this thing is amazing. You know, even with their speaker wires and all that, which they suggest that you use, which is silver, um, everything is just- This one's just, not, this one's copper. This one's copper? I yeah. thought it was silver. No, it's okay. copper. It, it, the, the combination sounds wonderful. Words just cannot explain how fleshed out the sound is. Um, the mid-range is just beautiful. Uh, the speaker sounds amazing for what it is. Um, not what it cost, but what it is. Honestly, I mean, it just looks like, a, when you're looking at it, it just looks like a box. And, and a small box. A, a, a very small box. Yeah, it's not a big box. No, not a big box, but, you know, there's people who will come and, 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 and comment on, when they say, hear the price, they go, sounds great, but, but, but. I mean, our initial impression, we have... We have the hemp version of this speaker. Yeah, which, which sounds is, good too. Which is really good. Yeah. Um, it looks exactly the same, except it doesn't have the furniture grade finish on it and mm. the external crossover. And when we took it out of the box and we thought, well, this looks like nothing. <laughs> Literally, it looks like something you buy at, you know, uh, one of those audio supermarkets. Uh, or the it, white it, van. Yeah, or, or <laughs> yeah, it came, hey, guy, it came off. Yeah, it just fell off, right? So, you know. Um, it's nine thousand dollars Canadian, and it, it sounds fantastic once you set it up properly. And mm -hmm. and this is seventy two thousand, and and there's a version that's over a half million dollars, and it's essentially a Snell speaker. I think they you know sort of were inspired by uh, some Snell speakers way back in the day, and they really haven't changed much of this at all in terms of the way it looks. And it doesn't come with a grill. It doesn't come with a grill. <laughs> That's another thing too. The box is not that great. <laughs> I don't know. I think some supermarket um, items are packaged better than so that. So Val but... just delivered us a new pair of Acora speakers. And he actually has custom plywood boxes to ship them in. Crates, yeah. Crates, crates. crates. Yeah. Awesome, yeah. Adrian, I, I, I know Adrian was listening this morning and I had to run outside because it was so loud. I don't know. Well, I, I, um, I, I like to play at different levels just to see what, um, what the capabilities are. So as I say, uh, th this is all first impressions. And, and so far, first impressions have been very, very positive indeed. Um, so right after Philip texted me the night before about how he was feeling, um, uh, I decided that uh, the next morning I would come in and listen. And, and so I was here from, I turned the system on around about 3.30 or so when I got in in the morning and by about five o'clock I started listening. The boys came in around 9.30 or so. I was still, I had just finished listening. And I, I remember vividly that uh, a couple of times through uh, my listening session, I was getting very, very emotional and teary-eyed because I was listening to all the different songs that I, I had grown up with, things that uh, I have uh, tremendous fondness for. And I was wondering if uh, today whether I would um, uh, have the same kind of reaction. So <clears throat> my, my let me start by uh, um, sort of explaining my, my uh, musical priorities today. 
Um, some of you who have watched our videos for, for a while now will know that <clears throat> back in the 80s, when I first got into this uh, crazy industry, um, what was fascinating to me was things like imaging, detail, sound staging, speed, all the buzzwords that if you were ever to find magazines back in that time, you would see a lot of that. That's because uh, Harry Pearson, Absolute Sound. Sterophile even, because those were all new. Um, systems before that didn't do very much of that. And then suddenly speakers started to, systems I should say, started to be able to do the, these things. And because they're new, you chase them. And, and, and then you start wondering, can you hear more transparency? Can you hear more detail? Can you hear more sound staging and, and imaging? And Harry Pearson famously uh, talked about the Casino Royale album, The Look of Love, um, with Dusty Springfield and how she sounded like she was in a recording booth and you could hear her voice bounce off the walls in the recording booth. And so, of course, everybody started trying to find this old album um, um, and, and to see whether they could hear the same thing. Um, and um, so, so I chased that for a long time until at some point I realized that I was no longer enjoying the music that I grew up with and, and, and was very important to me. Um, and that caused a bit of a crisis in my um, um, uh, life because I didn't want to give up that kind of music. And or at the same time, it's almost as if coming to a point where you realize the emperor has no clothes. Anyway, long story short, today, for me, what's most important is um, <clears throat> emotional connection. When you listen to the system uh, uh, and you play music that you care about, do you get involved? If you don't get involved, then everything else really doesn't matter to me. <clears throat> and then uh, uh, also important, of course, tonal purity. If you're listening to Pavarotti, does he sound like it could be Pavarotti instead of Josh Groban, you know, <laughs> as an extreme example? Or should a guitar sound like a piano? You know, and of course, I'm being extreme, but uh, you understand. Um, and then dynamic nuances. Um, uh, David Wilson has always made a very important point about how important dynamic nuance is. The, the, the differences between soft and softer and, and loud and louder and, and all the gradients in between. Can a system do that? Because if it cannot, if, it, if it's always dynamically compressed, then it cannot give you the illusion that you're listening to a, 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 a real instrument, a live instrument or live uh, performance. And then f much lower would be things like sound staging and imaging. And the reason I'm bringing this um, um, set of priorities up is because in the last couple of three weeks where I've um, been in the store and I've had the pleasure of talking to different clients, um, I've had this discussion with a few of them where um, the feedback that I hear from them is that, oh, they're, they're, they're looking for a better system that can give them more sound staging and more imaging. And that's okay. If that's what you want and it's your money, uh, by all means. Um, uh, but I, I realize mentally that um, I want those things, but not at the expense of the other things that I care about. Those things must be there uh, and 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 be really really good. I've I all the different shows that at the last Toronto Audio Fest where I managed to actually go into a couple of rooms, um, and I was invited to one particular uh, presentation. I went in, and that system certainly soundstage and image like crazy, but left me completely cold. Tonally was all screwed up. It it had no uh, tonal purity at all. It's sounded completely wrong and uh, so who cares if, if images like that when um, it just doesn't sound right so all of that is to say that the audio note system does the first three things really really well so tonal purity emotional engagement uh, dynamics uh, nuances those things it does really really well the fourth thing the sound stage and imaging not bad it's as Philip said it it's it it doesn't do any of the audiophile categories uh, at the highest level, per perhaps. Uh, in other words, you will find other speakers, they'll have a wider sound stage or a deeper sound stage or sharper image or more um, precise imaging within the sound stage. You will find systems that can do that. You will find systems that will delineate better. You will find systems that will have way better transparency and, and, and be able to hear the fifth row differentiated from the 15th row. If that is what you're looking for, this system is probably not for you, um, at least so far. And of course, we still haven't uh, played with the uh, um, uh, placement of the speakers so either. I, I had a conversation with an audiophile not that long ago, and I was trying to explain what I listened for. And I told him 
you know, I want the 95% between the extremes to be as good as possible in a way that engages me. And the way he explained himself was that he's looking for the extremes. That other 5% has to be as great as possible. And that's assuming that the 95% is good. And I think that's the wrong approach. With this amplifier, that 95% is actually edging out to 99%. It's just the very extremes that perhaps it doesn't do quite as well as other systems in this kind of price range. But everything else in the middle is just... It's just balls to the walls. It scales unbelievably. The engagement is intense. It's really, 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 really intense, more than anything else I've ever heard. And I can only expect it to get better. I mean, I 100% I agree with you. Mm-hmm. That's that's the priority. It's that, it's that, you know, what does it do to you? It's not about, you know, how it's presenting itself in terms of the some sort of absolute scale thing. It's just the way it engages you that's so different. Yeah, I mean... In in the interview I did with Peter, Peter Quattro about uh, audio note, and he's the um, he, he's the final arbiter of what gets made and produced um, at the factory, and we talked a little bit about um, some of my past experiences and why in the early days uh, I wasn't um, in love with um, single ended products that use three hundred Bs and two elevens and so on, and I've certainly bought a lot of them or traded a lot of them in. And that's, I think, because in in those cases, whenever I had those products, the speakers generally didn't sound very good, or 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 they were so colored that it um, completely took away any hope that the electronics could um, turn me on, so to speak. But with um, the audio note speakers, they have high sensitivity, benign impedance, um, and so the the um, the coloration. Um, is not as severe as the horn speakers that I've had before or the other high efficient speakers I've had before. So <clears throat> I think that might be the reason why this system sounds really, really good. I'll, I'll just give you a couple of um, examples of what I, I, um, what I listened, um, what I heard. Um, there's a really great, interesting cut, uh, John Kaizen Neptune, and the cut is called Japanese Roots. So the whole album is... Um, using instruments made with bamboo. And when I heard this, it, it took me back to when I was 6 to 11 years old, 12 years old, lived in a village in Singapore. Um, and a lot of people to this day can't understand how, how, what I mean by that. Because you think of Singapore today, you think of a, a, a um, an advanced metropolis, very clean and so on. But back when I lived in Singapore, back in the Stone Age, um, Singapore was... Um, not very developed. When it when when the monsoon season came, we had floods. the 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 drains beside the uh, small roads would over flood, and and you had sewage, and we had uh, thatched huts that people lived in with out outhouses, and so that's what Singapore was. Um, and uh, all of our neighbors, ourselves, we lived in these. Uh, comp- uh, 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 I guess the native word would be called kampongs, which is villages. And um, my neighbors, when they cooked, I could smell, and you could smell the dust of the road and all these other delightful smells that I've forgotten. Anyway, one of my neighbors made um, um, instruments with bamboo because Singapore, lots and lots of bamboo, and you make. And and from time to time, I would go over and sit with him, and he'd tell me stories, and he'd play his instruments and I would learn to play as well so when I heard this it brought back all these memories because I had I had not heard the sound of a bamboo instrument for so long and and this sounded so real to me and the the micro and macro dynamics of the uh, of, of the cut is wonderful another one Sarah Burrells I think that's how you pronounce her name singing si- sitting at the dock of the bay live uh, the album is uh, brave enough live at the variety playhouse um, when you play this cut, you're you're there with her on stage, very close to the piano. You can hear. So now we're talking about the audiophile stuff. Um, uh, as Villa pointed out, it'll do like 90, 95 percent really well. You're right there. The emotional engagement, her her uh, nuance of, of singing, her vo- uh, uh, vocal range, and the way she plays piano. You can hear how the uh, uh, concert goes are edging her on, encouraging her. It's it's so good. You're you're right there. Um, and then talk about emotional engagement. I, I first heard uh, Hugh Masakela's Stamella um, 
must have been 25 years ago, so at a CES, and uh, I believe it was the avant-garde horn speakers, and um, the presenter was cranking this thing, and um, there are certain cuts. So Hugh Masekela is is telling a story about uh, coal workers, uh, coal mine workers, I guess, and how terrible the conditions are, and and uh, I remember when I first heard it. I was amazed at the dynamics and the impact of that system. As I say, I think it was the avant-garde. But I also didn't like the horn characteristics which I heard. Um, and over the years, of course, I played this cut many times and on the Wilsons and so on, and, and I've always enjoyed the dynamics without the coloration. With this system, I was wondering, can I play it loud enough to scare myself? Because remember, this is only 20 watts, uh, but with high sensitivity speakers, or at least that's what the, the factory claims. And I played it loud enough, and it certainly scared me. But also, what's interesting is that uh, for the first time, I also heard the anguish the bitterness in his voice when he tells the story about these workers. If you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, search the cutout, listen to it, and listen to the words. Um, uh, he is bitter and angry and upset with how Africans are treated um, uh, in, in this particular industry. And, and talk about emotional engagement. I was really involved after hearing this for so long, this was the first time I actually heard the words and understood the words. Um, so this is what uh, Philip and I are talking about in terms of emotional engagement. Um, and then um, and then finally for emotional engagement, I told the story to Philip uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, for some reason, I started thinking about my brother, Ian, who passed away over 20 years ago. and. Um, one day I came across this um, a YouTube video about Vince Gill singing the song um, uh, Go Rest on That High Mountain and I'm watching it on YouTube with my Apple earphones and I weep like a baby thinking oh my god the words are unbelievable so this morning right I played the same song and sure enough it, it, it reduced me to tears um, um, if if there's one thing that, that's phenomenal about this system so far is that it will, for the kinds of songs that you care about, really make sense to you. And then, and I agree with um, uh, Lewis that it is a lot of money, there's no question. I, I, I can't imagine uh, too many of these systems being sold. But the good news is that even with the Cobra system that we reviewed a couple, three weeks ago, with the audio note uh, uh, D E or E D system speakers, I can get a, a significant amount of that emotional engagement, and uh, so uh, um, kudos to audio note. So we have in the front room yeah. we have the least expensive audio note system, which is the I zero, yeah. and a pair of audio note K speakers in the D right against the wall, right against the wall. So these are little tiny speakers that uh, don't even have a hemp driver. They're, they're paper drivers with regular, I guess, ceramic magnets. And the, 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 the amplifier is a push-pull triode, but it's eight watts. And we can play it fairly loud, and the emotional engagement is just off the charts again, um, more than anything else. Uh, and remember those two gentlemen who we know very well was amazed they were amazed they're both audiophiles and they were amazed that that little amplifier but not only that but that little amplifier was the right there playing on those wilsons too and i could not believe it what's aside sounded so beautiful I, I didn't believe until i heard it to tell you the truth i i i, I it was exceeded my expectations and it gets better every day that we turn it on I can't imagine how, where it's going to end up. And it heats up the room very well, too. Yes, we've had a few people comment <laughs> on that. They're like, you know, they're, they're ah, man, my hands are cold. And they put their hands, like, just above the tubes, and it warms them up nicely. No, I, it's, I, it's a great space warmer, Adrian. Anyway, we've gone on long enough. Certainly, this is our first impressions, and, and, and uh, very, very um, encouraging. I look forward to breaking it in past the 225, 250-hour mark and then seeing what uh, what further developments uh, come out but so far I think we all like it a fair bit I, I don't like it I love it <laughs> <laughs> well I already told you it's the best amp I've ever heard so and I don't expect well that the to combination change. really 
Uh, but, well, I heard it on other speakers, so it's okay. able to do lots of stuff. But yeah, definitely with these speakers, there's 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 an approach, there's there's a uh, result that is uh, beyond my imagination, to tell you the truth. Um, I didn't expect it. I yeah, I, I can't even imagine that kind of sound, and it's there. It's like right there in front of you. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching this very very long. Um, uh, verbal diary from the three of us um, and if you like the video please like share and subscribe Ooh, look at that like share and subscribe <coughs> and uh, we'll see you again next time Adrian from Audio X Lens uh, Philip Lewis uh, Alex sitting in the corner falling asleep and Christian we'll talk to you next time take get care, a everybody. haircut <laughs> <laughs>